Namai, Haere Mai, Kia ora, and welcome into English Park. History on English Park pitch a hundred years ago and seventy odd days when the very first match between the Canterbury and Wellington women in football. Today, that's reenacted the Canterbury United Pride up against Capital Football in what is a clincher in the South Central Series. Well, it has been historic for the football ferns during the week for the Wellington Phoenix, and then last night to celebrate all of that, there was the delivery of the Legacy Project as well here at English Park. I was lucky enough to catch up with a couple of VIPs, including New Zealand Football President Johanna Wood, and first up, Alana Gunn, the coach of Canterbury Pride. Alana Gunn, this is a great night for women's football, not just here in Canterbury, but for New Zealand. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really pleased how it's um, come about. It's really um, great to see the faces of people reunited with some teammates from you know over 30, 40 years ago. So yeah, it's going well. 100 years you're celebrating. We're celebrating the Phoenix women playing in their opening match in professional women's football. What, how much better could it get? Yeah, I don't think it gets better at the moment, you know, with the World Cup legacy launch, um, the Phoenix playing tonight, 100 years of women's football, um, go the girls. <laughs> For the first time, our female footballers have a pathway in the professional league, which is close to home. It's not like going over to the other side of the world. So um, from that point of view, it's, it's really, really important. These girls will now be able to aspire to something. I mean, they've seen our ferns, but not often at home. So this time it's going to be about near and, and being able to participate and when we can have those home games here in New Zealand it's going to be even more important. Yes indeed and it is all on. In the South Central Series we talked about this match for probably more pressure on the Canterbury United Pride, Mike Tobono, given that they have to win their last two games and less pressure on Capital Football. But let's first of all have a look at the lineup for Canterbury Pride. Yeah, just uh, speaking of Lanagam, Prior to the game, she's starting with a really strong lineup. Uh, Una, Una Foyle um, in goal, Jazz, Jazz, Rebecca Lake, Michaela Hunt, and Laura Ward back four. And a midfield three of Whitney Hepburn, Kate Lewin, and Annalie Longo. And up three up front with uh, Nicola Dominikovic, Guilford, and Frankie Morrow. Uh, Freya, Freya Lodge Winham, Kiara Bacelli, Ellen Firth, uh, Charlotte Mortlock, and Annie Foot. Annie Foot, the goalkeeper will we see her on the pitch for the pride well it is a strong side and we have been chatting to to Vink. of course he has got a reconnection she's in charge of the capital football side but we know that she will bring a team that is well structured well coached and that they will have an ability as they've shown us in the south central series this year how well they can score goals so Maya Vink and the capital side what can we expect from them today? Well, last year's finalist, and uh, you and I both coming on that, and then she's coming out with a very strong squad as well, um, with Molly Simmons in goal, Gemma Robertson, Rosie Wild, Jaden Watts, and Anna Green, um, uh, international at this point in time, as a back four, field board of Olivia Ingham, Helena Errington, Kennedy Bryant, Olivia Gibbs, and up front, a Peppy Oliver Bell and Kaylee Ward in the bench. Uh, she's had to bring in a couple of people just uh, with injuries and that sort of stuff. So Samantha Woolley, Samantha White, Anna Gray and Lauren Owen on the bench. Yep. Well, I tell you what, she's certainly had her challenges in terms of getting <laughs> a, a, not only a, a, a playing 11. Look, a couple of players, head clashes, both were ending up with broken noses and ACL. Alan Fibbs, I mean, it's just so tragic really for them, isn't it? Yeah, it is tragic, and, and some of those things have happened just mm. in uh, little warm-up games. I think we were talking to her before the game and uh, a game of tag and a couple of injuries from that, a couple of broken noses, and, those, and they've got to go in to have a surgery 
So, you know, <laughs> the game of football off the field is, is just as, it, uh, I suppose, exciting and exhilarating as it is on the field. Yeah, look at the Sugarloaf receiver transmitter sitting proudly up there on the Port Hills. We can happily report it's very warm in Christchurch, 25 degrees, and we have got an easterly, but it's a nice warm one, which is unusual. But I tell you what, Mike DeBono, down on that English Park pitch, it's hot. Yeah, well, we've got a 25 degrees off the pitch, and for all of those people watching, add another 10 when you're on the pitch. Uh, the, the heat really radiates off the pitch. The feet swell immensely, so the players need to be very, very <laughs> hydrated. I was talking to a whole lot of them beforehand from both sides, just uh, giving them some advice, having been on the sideline just as a coach um, and getting them to take as much water as they can. Well, look, we spoke a little earlier, the football ferns and their win over South Korea. Um, and we're looking at it from a, a lens of a Canterbury perspective, and, and we talked about how many of those were bring, coming up through our grades here. Gabby Rennie, Ashley Ward, Michaela Moore, and Vicky and what a great day and goal she had. It's fantastic, yes. Gabby's second uh, international goal, but uh, a really proud moment for the region, a really proud, proud moment for uh, coaches that have been involved in their development, uh, and me being one of them as well. So sitting in, in, a, in a lounge and uh, watching the game has real meaning, you know, and I just spoke to uh, um, both of the coaches and, you know, they've played with the coach and, and it's such a proud moment for them as well. Um, so, yeah, really exciting on that international stage. Absolutely. So then we look at the Wellington Phoenix, of course, captained by our very own Lily Alfeld, vice-captain, our very own Kate Taylor. Zoe McMeekin had a fantastic match and Alyssa Wynnum coming off the bench at such a tender age. How fantastic. Yeah, well, I think it was highlighted last, last night. It provides a real pathway for all players. And if you look at, uh, you know, Zoe McMeeking, a young, up-and-coming uh, international player, was mentioned by uh, the coach at the end of the game, had a great game. But, uh, yeah, really exciting. And, and yeah, it was uh, great to watch. And I'm sitting there with my daughter watching it as well. So um, it was fantastic. And, again, for the region, plus also for the country. We've got the players coming out onto English Park, and I just think back to September 24, 1921, and think what those women, as they came out onto English Park, must have been thinking as these players now march out. Anna Marie Keeley will have the whistle, Sarah Jones and Alice Clipton, and doing all the deeds with the substitutes, Lindsay Robinson as well. So it is, if, if I feel that vibe, that historic. Five. I really do get it here and it's such an important week for women's football in Aotearoa. Yeah and it's not uh, one that's taken lightly by the players as well and um, they are very aware of significance and I've spoken to a number of players prior to and you'll see this probably the same pride and passion which was shown way back then in today's game as you've highlighted a win at all costs basically for both teams you know my Vink has got a little bit of leeway but the attitude is we have to win and from Alana Gunn's perspective, it, it is a must win, um, considering the, the two losses they had to start with, which has put them on the back foot. So you'll see the same passion, the same, I suppose, Canterbury capital spirits that you saw way back then today. Interesting, wasn't it? Back in 2013, of course, Alana Gunn and Maya Vink, the two opposing coaches, played together for the pride. <laughs> yeah, it's, I suppose you've, you've highlighted a number of uh, international players and some of the players that played for the Phoenix. Uh, both players have either coached or played. Maya Vink has played with every one of those players uh, apart from a couple of the youngies. So a very proud moment for her because she's uh, been part of their development as a player. Um, and she is a bit of a, a mentor as well and Alana Gunn in terms of a coaching capacity. So yeah, fantastic. Well, the players now are getting an official photo taken of the two sets of 23. And the importance of this looking back is amazing, isn't it? Like we've got a, a well-scripted press report on that Canterbury Wellington match back in 20, 1921, but no photo, not with this anyway. I think there is a photo floating around somewhere in the, the way that the handsome uniforms that they both were wearing on the day, but that's what they wore. But the terminology, Mike DeBono, I'm thinking, would you get away with it these days? Um, the local girls were a buxom lot. The two goalies were built for the position. Would we be able to say that today? Well, probably you, but not me. Um, I think what's really cool in terms of that article, it's a big article. And, True. you know, it would be nice to see something of that ilk uh, put into our papers of, of present, you know, because um, these girls, they perform well on this stage here from a national perspective. They go and play for a club from a Wellington Phoenix perspective. And they put on what they put on in an international perspective. 
you know, the had some kudos. So, yeah, fantastic article, but no, I probably wouldn't be able to get away with it, but you would. <laughs> and uh, what's more, 1921, they played with under 2,000 strong spectators. Amazing. That was after, of course, World War One and everything that had happened. And then, unfortunately, the FA in the UK banned women's football. And being the mother country, so did we for quite a few years. But we're back in business, and we have got before us an absolute pearler of a match between the home side, the Canterbury United Pride, wearing the red tops, black shorts, and Capital Football in the gold and the white shorts. And there is everything on the line, not only history, but for the current South Central series. Of course, we know Capital Football have been in really impressive form, and they'll want to, as you mentioned, continue their winning ways, keep the momentum of their campaign. But the Pride have had a couple of two very good victories, 2-5-0, but this will be the big test. Yeah, absolutely. And Capital uh, kept that momentum going with a good good result last week against uh, a southern side, a strong southern side. But, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, the Canterbury Knight of Pride, two great wins and two good wins in terms of the goals because eventually it could come down to goal difference. So the goal piece is, is a very important important thing. So when you look at the table, you've got uh, both, uh, I think, Southern and uh, Capital on nine points and uh, Canterbury United Pride on, on, on six points. So how fitting that the 124 cap football fern, Emily Longo, gets the first pass underway. And we've already got quite an intense, there's a lot of uh, talk already out there and some very handy skill and control from the team coming from the capital city and look very assured very early on oh, they may have had the first kick off the pride but they haven't been able to see the ball since the good contest kaylee ward she's a goal scorer of, uh, as well for capital they're going to have to keep an eye on her and here they are a lovely pass out by olivia ingham wearing seven but frank with the ball for the pride does a nice little neat ball round her left side of her defender and gets the applause from the crowd that have gathered in the Steve Sumner stand. And of course we are now in COVID times, the traffic light orange, which means um, no restrictions on crowd size. Yeah, that's fantastic, as long as everyone's got their passport. Exactly, vaccine pass, uh, uh, just taking it as a given. We just have to keep reminding people Rebecca Lake goes and retrieves the ball for the pride, the captain. And you're going to, see, going to see a lot of this uh, today from uh, from the left-hand side of Capital with Anna Green getting forward as much as she can and providing a bit of impetus or some real attacking impetus on that left-hand side. Yeah, well, she's key for the Capital side, isn't she? 78 cap firm. She will be looking to lead and just give confidence to the players that have been brought in because of the injury toll on this Capital football side. But I guess... You know, the wonderful thing about the football firms having played during the week, then the Wellington Phoenix, we know those players have been, particularly the Phoenix players, plucked out of local competitions. It's going to examine the depth, and it's there. Well, it, it does that, but also it provides a real, um, I suppose, goal orientation for players that uh, want to get to that, that level, which is fantastic. So you have the Phoenix on the men's side, now we've got it on the women's side, so any one of these players can be looked at to be uh, representing... Um, let's say their country when, when they're part of a Wellington Phoenix setup. Una Foyle has the ball for the Pride, the goalkeeper, Green, and nodded forward. Yeah, just talking to uh, Capital coach Maya Vink before the game, and, and her message will be and is just to warm into the game. Oh, this is a great hunt for the ball. Pippi Oliver Bell is a lively striker watch for her wearing 12 for capital and nine katie ward are the goal scorers and they know how to find the back of the net and una foyle just giving some last minute instructions to those ahead of her gets good purchase on that bouncy surface looking to link up with those strikers and foil this time being called on to clear once more the early part of this game is with capital great ball out onto the left striding through Kennedy Bryant is it too much for you so Anna Green is it yeah Anna Green driving in from that left hand side a 
a ball played out, I believe it was from uh, Kennedy Bryant, who's been part of this uh, setup for quite a while. But again, that left hand side is going to be a big piece uh, for this capital side and the legs of Anna Green and uh, this Canterbury United Pride need to be wary of that until we get the first corner. Let's see what Capital Football can do with this. They've got tall players, including Jaden Watts wearing 13, and Foyle is reduced to punching the ball out to get rid of the danger. Still not released from the defence, but this is a great opportunity for Capital. Lovely pass back, and Foyle had to go down to her left to get that out. And this time looking for an acute angle clearance for the Pride, but they still have control. Gemma Robertson opts to go back to the skipper. Yeah, and that was number eight, uh, Helena Errington having a, a shot then, just combining on the edge of the box to be put through. So uh, the intent is shown by, by Capital Football. Um, probably first couple of minutes, they've had the best of the best of the best of those minutes. It's one of the rare times that I've seen Rebecca Lake having to react really quickly because she usually has so much time. Looking for the whistle, doesn't get it, goes the other way. So Capital, what can they do now? They'll be looking to make something of this early position that they've had. And they've certainly put pressure and put the heat on the pride. Yeah, they'll be looking for the quality of Vanna Green there, putting the ball in the box uh, just so they can try and attack the ball and put pressure um, as they run onto the ball and try and get a, get this Canterbury United Pride side on the back foot. Oh, a hand beat position for Capital. What can they do with it? As the defensive screens the are set for the Pride. Number four waits on the uncoiled spring as the ball comes in. It's a great free kick. And I can tell you the direction was superb and it's putting a lot of pressure on that deep defence still with Capital. What can they do? Rosie Wild has it at the moment. And they're winning the one-on-one -on -one battles as well. Look at that nifty little skill and footwork. Again, getting the ball in, looking for the offside. And it's called, finally. And that was just a late challenge. No malice on Whitney Hepburn, but it was just a little bit late, the whistle, and she was already into follow-through yeah. with the foot. And there, yeah, nothing in that. And uh, just Rosie Wild getting a talking to from... Uh, the referee there but again um, under pressure with a great ball in and it was a great uh, defensive header by Kate Lloyd but uh, Capital really showing their intent as you say uh, winning these 50-50 challenges second phase ball which is going to be very important today. I've been so impressed in the South Central series by Lara Wall out on the left for the Pride. She's so solid at the back isn't she and, and just her ability to come through and yep. overlap. She's uh, similar to Anna Green, she loves to get forward. Uh, she has been playing a little bit higher on that left wing side, but probably more accustomed to the left back. And I think it solidifies the, the back line of Canterbury United Pride, but she'll be looking to get forward as much as uh, Anna Green does as well. Oh, clever work, Kate Lloyd. A little bit of subtlety too, adding to keeping the position. This is what they've been starved of so far because the team in yellow, Lloyd comes in again and steals the ball. And can she get hold of it, Guildford? Wall opts for the lob into the box and a scramble. Oh, great work! Ali Simons and goal picked it out, plucked it out of the air. Yeah, that's a great little ball in from Lara Wall, as we've just been speaking to. And uh, I think that was Frankie Morrow coming in. And, and the pride will be looking to utilize the, the pace of uh, those. So it was actually Nikola Dominikovic coming in. been shutting down the pride very early but this is really good control from the team wearing red and black can they keep this one in some hard running being done by Morrow up that right side yeah that's uh, a great little uh, move down there but just that final pass I think just the last couple of minutes we've seen a couple of wayward passes uh, the pride have got the wind to their back so they're just gonna have to uh, under hit a few things otherwise it's just gonna roll on with this uh, fast surface 25 degrees that's the air temperature you know that you can add 10 for pitch side because of the little rubber beads that are in between the pile of this artificial surface they tell me that it is due to be replaced it's had its 10 years yeah i think i was working in the organization when it was put down so that's uh, a little while ago but yeah every 10 years the beads get replaced and the shock pad underneath so yeah that'll be due because it's uh, it is over the 10 year use by date i think we're just coming up 
but back in 1921, 100 years <laughs> plus a few days, it would have been grass. It would have been grass and uh, probably not manicured as we get these days. Oh, here's Capital again showing their prowess. Pepe Oliver Bell is ever present up the front as you would expect, looking for a latching on and foil being called on this time she dives to her right so she's already had to go across to her left she's very tall in the foil and goal for the pride yeah a fairly comfortable save there for in the um goalkeeper coach duncan uh, will be uh, i suppose adamant that she takes those uh, cleanly and comfortably oh brilliant that's yeah. so good isn't it so and that's great. kate lloyd or a t yeah but i think uh, you're seeing um some good, uh, I suppose, coaching advice from both teams, looking to be comfortable on the ball, um, looking to promote the ball a little bit slower um, and calmer in terms of uh, where they're trying to play the ball to ensure that they get that accuracy. Uh, but we see a wayward pass here by Rebecca Lake, which has put them under pressure. It certainly has, and she closes down that space like a champion, didn't she? Yeah, she's got great pace, um, and you don't normally see that, as you uh, highlighted uh, uh, to start with, uh, mistakes around Rebecca Lake, and it probably just uh, highlights the importance of the game, which puts pressure on even the the most mature players who have uh, played at international levels. Um, so yeah, some of the pressure might be telling on um, the Canterbury United side, which actually have to get a win here. Um, That's a good boot forward from Foil. Holds his face looking to draw the player at time Michaela Hunt but again they are ready for anything capital and running hard onto the ball again Anna Green up on that left flank as you suggested it's going to be a real potent part of the capital armory yeah I think what you'll see is is their right side tuck in a bit more um, more times than not and the attacking input has come from uh, that side there, which we've just seen, and a great ball in by Anna Green, and Kaylee Ward just couldn't get on the end of it. Great steal. Capital putting so much pressure on. Again, that little subtlety for the players that, like Hepburn, who've got so much experience. And even there from Annie Longo, two players pressuring there, which makes the pass a little bit harder, and the ball goes uh, out for a throw. So, yeah, Capital uh, understand what they need to do today, which is to really put pressure onto this Canterbury United pride side, but also um, have a lot of belief in their own abilities, um, considering last year's finalists. And it was a, that was a great game also. Could have gone either way. Um, and today they'll be uh, wanting to, I suppose, show that sort of, uh, I suppose, commitment, that sort of steal they had last year. Absolutely right. Well, it's interesting you talked about Annalie Longo. I mean, whenever she's got the ball, you're right, there's been two on her. They're not, just not going to give her any space at all. And you could understand that because she is such a game breaker. But she'll buy the time. She will. But then uh, the Canterbury Knight of Pride looked to now need to, if there's two on her, there's going to be options elsewhere. So look at alternative routes to be uh, uh, coming out from the back or getting, getting forward a little bit quicker. Oh, this is an injury. Who's Michaela that? Michaela Hunter, I think. Oh, yes. I, I would imagine as the game goes on, we will see when uh, situations like this occur that the water will be run on yeah. because the hydration will be really important. Yeah, that is key. And, and, and people uh, who are watching um, yeah, need to understand that it is yeah, 25 degrees out there, but 30, 35 degrees on the pitch. So whenever they can get uh, water breaks, um, it is important for them to get that and you might see the referee maybe chuck in one maybe in between each half so getting themselves set for just a restart and Anna Marie Keeley referee just demonstrating where she wants the players to be and we're off as it would normally do, go back. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, the the uh, rest of the capital team were happy with that because I believe they had the ball um, with the injury, so it should have probably been the other way, giving it back to uh, the capital team. But hey, I've got it back anyway. Well, momentarily, all bit of confusion between the two players. There's lots of red shirts around the ball. Now this is it, Longo. 
getting the ball away out onto the right and just a little pump back trying to keep the ball moving trying to push forward yeah, that's that early ball forward for uh, the capital players to try and get on but what you're seeing Anley longer having to drop a little bit deeper to try and influence play which I don't think Alana Gunn will be too happy with she'll want her to be a bit higher working off the front three uh, trying to get into pockets uh, behind the back four of the capital side or just in front but not in front of their own back line tackle lovely poke tackle and again long goes just so quick over two meters isn't she acceleration rate is fantastic but so too the reading of the game from this team from wellington capital Gemma Robertson so quick, equally as quick. There's someone on the sideline who's gone down. Uh, I think it's Kate Gilford. Don't know what happened there. She just took the throw and just fell to the ground. Well, they want to keep her on because yep. she's been scoring goals. Just went the push she? Actually too sure she took the throw long throw and just went straight down well, she'll take the throw yep. anyway now right. regain position we're all good we had a couple of stoppages 15 minutes gone Lord. south central series reenacting the very first game of women's football in new zealand played between canterbury and wellington back in 1921 yeah, Miss Pointed scored from a penalty spot in the first half to give Canterbury a 1 0 victory. I think both coaches will take that uh, score happily today. So, some interplay, clever control, footwork, skill. Again, just good defending from this capital side, trying to make the. Uh, it's very hard for uh, Canterbury Knight to play through them. I'm just trying to pick up second phase ball, as you can see there. Well, like they're forcing Canterbury to be the initiators and, and, and just picking up all the balls that are just slightly off. Oh, that'll be a card. Yeah, very strong tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. You can just see again the, the pace of Anna Green there, just promoting the ball a little bit quicker and then uh, just drawing the foul from Michaela Hunt. But again, looking for that left-hand side, which I think is uh, Capital's outlet for a lot of attacking, as I said today. So they've just got to be aware on that side. Uh. Hey, you were telling us right at the beginning, Mike Devono, when we all watched that match, the, the Phoenix up against Western Sydney Wanderers in the opening match for the historic match for the Wellington Phoenix. One of the things that impressed me was the physicality and just seeing that foul there. We don't see a lot of that in, in the women's game in New Zealand, but there was a bit of it last night, but they stood strong and they were stoic, Phoenix, weren't Ab they? Absolutely. I think that's um, a credit goes to the referees as well to allowing that sort of stuff to happen. It's a, it's a contact sport, so those sorts of things would happen probably in a men's game and, and go on, but it, it's great that it's uh, flowing into... The, the, the female side because it promotes I think a better game giving herself some room and Guilford that time just as now chance for capital good control really impressive control from this capital side and look at that wonderful work they just seem to know where their players are well you're just seeing great influence from a Maya Vink coach side who's uh, getting to be comfortable on the ball, trust in themselves. Uh, you just see that little play there, little one-twos in front of the box. If they can't go in, they come back out, out to the left there, and, and Kennedy Bryant gets a left-footed shot away there. Interesting, the pride like to build theirs. They're not going to rely on big raking kicks up the field, are they? They, they want to control it equally out of defence. Yeah, and a lot of people might uh, cringe sometimes at, at, at long ball football, but... Um, it's football with intent if it's got something on the end of it so direct football nothing wrong with that if uh, you've coached it and you've got some intent which you sort of see here and Whitney will be disappointed with that uh, probably hoping a little bit more angle on that to utilize the pace of the front three she's got but uh, um, yeah I think uh, 
the points at this point in time for me would be on uh, capital at this at, at this juncture. I'd agree. Into the 19th minute, and it is nil all. Moon of foil and goal for the Pride had to make a couple of saves. Simon's had one pluck out of the year. And again, that very strong, stoic defence. But it will be a corner for the Canterbury Pride. And some great, great movement down that right-hand side. I think it was Dominikovic who's uh, linked up with uh, Frankie Morrow, who's been very, very good every time she's come on. As a substitute or started, I think she's been outstanding. She provides a lot of power and pace. She's physical. And uh, let's see how she can put this ball across and see what happens here. Morrow with the corner kick. Flat doesn't go where she wants it to and didn't really get the power that she probably wanted. This is Loy, Kate Loy. She has a shot too. Not to give it away. Guilford tries to keep it in. Yeah, and I think actually Kate Loy was looking for that little ball. I don't think it was a shot. Um, I could be wrong, but I think she was looking for that little angled ball across in behind the back line for a run going through. Um, but yeah, the, the Pride will be pretty disappointed with that uh, corner. You don't get opportunities like that and, and don't take advantage of them, especially against uh, Capital School, which is playing very well. So Whitney Hepburn there. No quarter given. No. And and it means a lot. I think you talked about it earlier too, because the Pride are playing with this easterly behind them, and it's significant. That they've just overcooked a couple of passes, the Pride. Yeah, yeah, and uh, both teams need to look at that uh, capital as they move into the second half. But yeah, they just need to be a little bit more accurate and take into account that wind and, and maybe angle the ball. So if they're on this left-hand side, look across the Oh, field. here's an opportunity now for oh. Capital. It's about what is going to happen. That is, yes, a penalty. Yep, Rebecca Lake, the Pride skipper. Has well, if we hop back to, to last year's final, I think... Uh, there was a shout for a penalty early on, if you can remember. Um, I do remember And it that. wasn't given. Yeah. And I was speaking to uh, Meyer about that the, the, just before we started. Uh, but again, just reward, I believe. Yeah, the pressure, Kaylee Ward. The, the pressure that uh, this capital side have been putting, and Kaylee has been um, instrumental at putting pressure on that back line. And probably indicative of maybe the season so far for the Pride. Um, just a little bit of lax and composure, so uh, let's see how Kayleigh Ward goes here. Well, is this reenacting in the opposite way from the historic match a hundred years ago? And Ward now will look to add to her tally. She's a leading goal scorer and does so, and Foyle goes the wrong way. 1 0 capital football over the Canterbury Pride. And it is just reward for their possession and for their control and the way that they've come into this match. Yeah, well, they've been uh, on the front foot, and especially in challenges, second phase. Uh, Kayleigh Ward been doing a lot of work up front, just harrowing both Michaela Hunt and, and Rebecca um, there and, and just you know, got the best of uh, uh, Rebecca there and uh, through and then a, a, maybe just a, a poor challenge by uh, Rebecca there, which we wouldn't normally see. So real pressure on now for the Pride, who really have to come out, um, which could open up this game big time. Yeah, well, they've just been shut down, especially in this area. They might get round one defender, but that next pass has gone wanting that. Talk about how they've been able to get the potency up front, but they've been so strong, their defensive structure, the capital yeah. side. Absolutely, they have agreed with that, but what they need to be wary of is just slackening off um, and loosening the reins on what good work they've done because this Canberra United Pride aren't champions for uh, no reason for the past, uh, what, seven years, and they will push everything. Um, 23rd minute, 1-0, capital. Good chat. Uh, quite quiet though. And so you see a little bit of a difference there. Ball played through. You'd normally see Kayleigh Ward pressuring that ball, but they're 1 0 up. They don't need to apply that pressure. Canterbury United Pride need to really come on now. Um, so, yeah, Capital really on the front foot. This goal really puts them in the box seat and they can really dictate how the game goes. Their passing has been so accurate. Fantastic. Well, they've obviously got a good, obviously come out with a good game plan as to where and how they want to promote the ball, as you say. 
as we see again down that left hand side this right hand side tucking in to keep a nice solid defensive structure and you see uh, Kennedy Bryan always dropping off there as well. Long ball through from Hepburn can't break that back four or back three anyway that Capital are employing. You've seen some glimpses of good passing movements from the Pride. Here's Longo making some room for herself. Hepburn just takes a little look up to see whether she can get the ball and now it's on for Lara Wall up that left flank overlapping coming back from defence can she get the ball across and again just that little bit of pressure that that player's putting on her. Yeah well you, you can see they've got eight players back defending but they've still got their front two up just for that uh, counter attack but the pressure on the ball is, is critical you don't have to make a touch you don't have to make a challenge just jog beside and make the player who's on the ball have to do the work and as we saw there Lara Wall probably unusually puts that ball out or overruns it just a little um, it looks like simple mistakes but you just can't say enough for the pressure that's being exerted on them yeah. and that's fair play right. to capital that's a lovely pass Pepe Oliver Bell that precision work and Olivia Ingham what will she do with the ball and again it's a hurried exit in the defense clever work but the strong legs of the pride captain yeah, and Helena Errington's having a great game in that uh, midfield there and uh, out of this this sort of midfield is a bit of a midfield battle in terms of uh, the three against the two and I think the capital capital team are uh, are actually up on uh, where how things are happening and she's taking some real control there but uh, we just saw in that little movement there um, earlier ball down the, the left hand side to Anna Green would have put Anna Green clean through well they've got the ball back anyway but just went in the wrong place but some excellent deep defending by Capital they look very confident they look very composed yeah and the two up front Pepe uh, and Kaylee Water are really really doing a great job defensively as well so one's pushing forward you see one just drops off to help uh, in that defensive moment. Long ball through, Guilford on the run, and it forces Simons to come out from her goal. A little bit of indecision from Capital. Wall can't keep control. He's bumped off a little bit and just couldn't regain a balance in time. But again, great, great composure. Um, keeper coming out and, and stopping that ball drops down and, and capital the composure just to get on the ball get players on the ball comfortable on the ball look to play out they haven't uh, panicked and uh, looking to promote the ball out play to the whistle yeah absolutely there was nothing in it both teams looking for a little bit of help I'm just getting up a bit but it's very warm well, I think uh, that's where you see the referee who's uh, refereed at the highest level, seeing all of these things happen at the highest level and, and promoting it as it should be at this level. Uh, I don't think there was anything in that. Good no. physical challenge. 50-50, yep. uh, ball's there to be won. Still and there to be played? Absolutely, and I just think that uh, just highlights how this game has gone so far. Capital football uh, just a lot more dominant in that physical battle. Um, and turning over the ball with good presence and, and as an individual and as numbers. Hepburn opts to go laterally and finds Loy, who compared to a couple of games that we've done recently, just hasn't featured as much, hasn't been given as much ball, neither has Annalie Longo. Lara Wall now looks up to see what she can find. Longo, in fact, comes back and is an initiator. And again, you see Annalie Longo coming back just into the deeper role of the, in the midfield there, trying to get on the ball. She needs to get on the ball a lot more if uh, Canterbury United Pride are going to get uh, back into this game. Well, they've kept the ball away from her, yeah. haven't they? They really have. Paul has it. Finds Loy. But for Guilford. And the pass across doesn't catch the wind as the other passes have. Hepburn and for the tackle. Defensively again, very sound, very compact from side to side, the capital side. And uh, Maya Vink has got this team really well drilled to really extinguish anything that Canterbury United Pride have, have uh, given at them at this point in time. Good hustle. 
again win that 50 50. Great ball Katie forward. Ward. Wow, that is a really wonderful example of how competitive that match is. Working really hard as a unit, Capital. Again, that, again, that just shows Kaylee Ward really, really working hard for for the team in terms of the ball. Not the greatest of ball, working hard though to to, to try and nick it um, and forcing a throw high up the pitch. So, this Capital side in, in the attacking or the defensive third of the uh, Canterbury United trying to cause a few issues, and the wind is starting to get up again. Well, starting to get up a little bit uh, heavier now, so. Ball. It's changed direction as well. Middle, middle, big, big, get middle. Again, floater ball through, trying to get in behind the capital defence. This is Longo going across. Can she meet up with Guildford? No. We keep it in though, and Lara Wall has pounced on it out on the left. Now it goes into the box, but again a solid wall of yellow. Um, Anley Longo there, just getting on the ball. Very tricky, putting a ball across there for Dominikovic and uh, just couldn't get on get on the end of it. But that's what she needs to do to get this Canterbury United pride back in the team, get on the ball, use her tricky feet to, to draw players in, one or two, and then play through them. Some help, a good sealed off by Lake, who keeps the ball, Guilford and Lake working well together. And just seeing Dominikovic down, she's on the way, is Longo, they're waiting for the offside. And then she puts it out, great goal. Emily Longo decides it's time for her to burst through. And she took her time, didn't she, Mike Bono, and she sealed it when she needed to. Well, that's uh, a lot of international caps in that game there. Um, other players might have uh, blasted it, but you saw a great ball through. I think it was Kate Loy, um, or Michaela Hunt, actually, and Annalie Longo breaking from deep and just taking her time, placing it to the to the right-hand side, the near post of the keeper. Keeper will be a little bit disappointed, maybe should have covered up that post, but. Great finish and uh, Canterbury United Pride back into this. So, what, 1 1. Well, there you have it in the flash. The world class play of Annalie Longo. I wonder what her thoughts were as she watched that Wellington Phoenix side take on that draw. Well, I know what mine were. I'd love to see her uh, in that yellow and black. She'd had some real quality and, uh, I suppose, drive to that midfield. Uh. Ward looks for the cross. So a bit more spark, well, it, it's not as if it was missing, but it's really that Capital have decided that they're going to put the pace into the game, and they certainly have in the opening 31 and a bit minutes. But they've stayed in the contest, have the pride, and they've been able to pull one back after Capital scored first. Now this is some great work by Morrow, but again that defence out on the left side has been so sure for Oh fantastic, Capital. Rosie Wild. You know, uh, you've got Frankie Morrow, good pace, good strength, and Rosie Wild with a great little challenge there, and uh, Capital able to uh, clear their lines. Oh, she's done a great job out there on the left, Rosie Wild. Yeah. She t time and time again has come up with the ball and just stopped the attack dead in its tracks. Pride outright. Again, just a little bit of composure needed there from Dominikovic uh, in a great position there, maybe to take it onto her right hand and put a quality ball in, but uh, just rushed a bit. Well, it's a miracle she's out there. I mean, she's been missing with that hip injury. I mean, it's quite significant. She's come back. I'm interested to see how long she gets in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think Kalana Gunn will be looking to get uh, a Chiara Bucelli uh, into the game uh, when uh, and if Dom Dominikovic uh, fades a bit or feels a little bit of that injury but here we go with uh, Kate Guilford. Can she keep it in this time and she's uh, offside oh. is she? Got the flag. You just see a little bit of the tide turning. Canterbury United now starting to apply a bit of pressure utilising um, Anneli Longo a little bit higher up the pitch which is great getting on the ball and a little a little through ball there but she'll be disappointed with that that final pass and she'll be asking the players to uh, do a little bit more and a little, be a little bit more precise in terms of the runs that they're making. Well, the early bursts that we've seen from Capital, will it have taken its toll as well, given these very hot conditions that we're playing in? 
yeah, I think that uh, evident there in terms of when, when and how the goal came. I think uh, Kennedy Bryant was driving with the ball on the side and just didn't have any runners in front, which they would have had in the, in the early starts. Um, and then she just lost the ball, and, and it was uh, Kate Guilford that actually played the ball through to Annie Longo. So they still need to have that energy. Uh, maybe not as much, they can just apply a little bit of pressure. Kamilikovic has the ball out wide on the right hand flank, up high, looks for the material, Annalee Longo, and this time still Kamilikovic earns her side a corner. Yeah, and that's better by Nicola using the quick feet that she's got uh, and earning uh, Canterbury Knight of Pride their second corner, or third corner. I certainly want to get a good purchase on this one. Get it up into the air, float it in towards the goal. You know, we're looking for the likes of uh, Lake and Hepburn to get on the end of this, and Michaela Hunt. To be the corner two, it is in there, and it's a loose ball. Dominikovic, the smallest on the park, has a go, and trying to hit it goalwards and offside as well, but much better corner kick. Yeah, much better there, and um, a great little ball. Great little tidy up uh, with Dom Dominikovic out on the left hand side there and uh, Rebecca Lake offside there, um, but it was just above her head. But again, the intent, Canterbury United showing the intent they've got and, and probably taking a little bit of a hold now. But we've got Kaylee Ward. Oh, sealed off beautifully by Michaela Hunt. I tell you what, um, goalkeeper Molly Simons took that goal kick very quickly. Yeah. Wanted to get on with the game and Really, that has been the signature from Capital today is that they have put the pace of the game and the momentum and it's made the pride come up and react to that. And that player there with the ball for Canterbury, Annalie Longo, has kept her side in the game through that magic goal in the 31st minute after Capital scored in the 22nd through the penalty. Kayleigh Ward doing the deed. And just Kate Lloyd just giving the ball away cheaply there. Pushing up this capital side, Robertson. And left, a lovely little pass through to Ingham, who has a charge, a little shimmy. A little bit of indecision, yeah, was there? A little bit of confusion there between uh, Jazz Donald and uh, Michaela Hunt there to give the throw there. But uh, again, the pressure starting to come back on. Uh, maybe uh, capital getting a little bit of a second wind in terms of the second half, where we're in 36 minutes in. Um, and we're wanting to finish this half really strongly. Well, they've been really good today, Capital, and played in this first 36 into the 37th minute as a team. And they're dangerous from here. Opportunity, look at that skill. Oh, beautiful, beating two, three. She's still got the ball. And a lovely little back flip for her as well. Helena Errington showing all the magic. Just wanting to get that shot away. And this time through more. Let's get rid of it. Jasmine Donald does so. <laughs> yeah. Some great little uh, passage of play there by Helena Errington. But uh, just probably could have uh, pulled the trigger a little bit earlier. She had a little window. We always talk about take those opportunities when they're open and she probably had you know the earlier opportunity as she chopped onto her right hand foot to maybe hit uh, with that right hand side and trying to hit that uh, that far post but Anna Green with a corner oh, let's see what she can do with this wind which is it does seem to have changed doesn't mm. it still warm though and it'll be, the players will be hoping there's a bit of breeze down pitch side for them the ball comes across it's a goodie for the kit skipper for the pride to head it out and foil gets right behind everything behind that one all yeah nana green won't be too happy with that corner she'll be expecting a, a lot better especially a uh, uh, player of her level and ability looking for some stretch out on the left hand side. Longo finds Guilford. Um, she's been busy, Kate Guilford. Looks to try and find Dominikovic. Putting a lot of pressure on. And again, 
One of the areas that I have been so impressed with in the South Central series has been the goalkeeping, and Molly Simons just looks so composed, and she had time. Yeah, she's reading the game well, coming off her line when she needs to the, to support the back line. She's a, obviously a defender as well, and uh, the defence plays a better if they uh, have a lot of faith in the keeper who comes off the line and, and works hard to uh, a combine in attacking moments, but also clean up uh, as a sweeper keeper when necessary. Hey, Pippi Oliver Bell has put some decent pressure on the pride defense and she's always popping up everywhere keeping them honest isn't she yeah absolutely yeah, both uh, here and Katie Ward have uh, worked very very hard uh, in this first half up front Jenna Robertson's done a power of work as well yeah, and they've all right just inside. done so well and this is Longo not only holds position but gets the pass away under pressure as well Guildford and just the troops where they're arriving Kennedy Bryant doing really well and holds her hands, palms up, Ray saying, Where's my support? <laughs> yeah, Kennedy Bryant's been in uh, this program for a long, long time, uh, had a number of uh, New Zealand camps and uh, some great uh, composure there. But yeah, she's wanting a little bit of, uh, or a little bit more options shown when she's on the ball. Um, and maybe this is just the temperature starting to take a little bit of effect in this half. So uh, come half time. Uh, hydration's gonna gonna be key for uh, both players, for both sets of players. You know, Mike, it's a coach that you've been heavily involved with age group and seeing the players, whether it be Football Ferns or Wellington Phoenix or down here, the Pride or Capital, you know, the players' ability to win their one-on-ones is really impressive and that's certainly a big growth area. Yeah, that's something that's uh, been looked at over the years in terms of uh, the ability for players to beat players one-on-one, -on -one, the, the, the technical ability they need to be able to do that, how they, um, I suppose, their mindset to do that. Um, but that's also in a defensive moment as well, how to defend in that one-on-one -on -one situation. So you're absolutely right, and I think we saw a lot of that last night in the Phoenix game, the ability. Great ball, that was a great free kick from Robertson. And it's a shot at goal, and Una Foyle does really well at point-blank range. She's going to have to find another one. No, it goes astray, but, gee, there was plenty on that one. Wow, well, um, yeah, I think... Uh, Pepe Oliver Bowell will be a little bit disappointed there and it was a good height for Una Foyle but uh, still have to make a good save and she does. This is where they've really hassled the pride, the capital side. They've put so much pressure, the ball coming out of defence. Look at that one red shirt and three yellow ones. It says so much. Yeah, well, we just saw that drop off a bit. That's when uh, the pride... Uh, She's up and good and close, haven't they? Brave, yeah. capital, losing the ball, going back and getting it. Well, Clean good, tackles. As you said, good in those one-on-one -on -one challenges. Uh, and then first of the ball, um, I suppose what we'd say is they've been very proactive in terms of those defensive moments. So when the ball's, when the ball's played to player, they've tried to nick it, they've tried to get in front, just to get a touch, just to disrupt, get a, I suppose, a shoulder on the player so that when they receive the ball, they're off balance. Um, and then at, at times, like you're seeing here, they just sat off, allowing United, United to have the ball and them to have to be uh, more precise in, in what they're doing. And they've just picked it up. And now they'll, as you can see, looking to promote on that left-hand side. Just been played in the midfield. But been searching for something just to penetrate respective defensive structures well interesting you just saw uh, Anley Longo asking for some instructions from the sideline so that just highlights the pressure that this capital team Ward has it on the box looking to give herself some room looking for a pass Hepburn comes out and was it Hepburn was it Wall I think Lara Wall clearing the yep. ball there but uh, got again, something on it. again Kaylee Ward asking the question but it was a tired pass and the ball in again Longo, oh, she gets almost dispossessed. Great challenge, but she recovers, shows all her skill level and prowess. Again, reading the play and reacting so quickly. And I, I 
that was just a little miss in communication, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Rosie Wilde's looking for the for the fullback or the wide player to be there, and absolutely she should be. And the wide players need to be um, looking at that as she's uh, promoting the ball across the field there. But again, the pressure sees uh, Capital pick up the ball, but you can see Annalie Longo is not happy with something on the pitch in terms of the the setup. So uh, I think asking for the team to be a little bit more compact in those defensive moments. Well, this is going to be a good race. They've had a great battle, these two, Ward and Lake, but it's Ward who comes off, gets the ball across and into the very safe football brain of Annalie Longo, who opts to go out right to Nikola Dominikovic. Guilford, she's had a good game too for the Pride. Being busy. No room to move. And a free kick for the Pride. Yeah, and again, uh, you just see there, probably just uh, asking for Nikola Dominikovic when she's on the ball there, no pressure, just to take her time in terms of the ball and uh, putting a lot of pressure on Kate Guilford to take the ball under pressure to try and keep the ball, even though they get a, uh, a free kick there. But also on the attacking side, I think uh, Kaylee Ward will be pretty unhappy. Uh, she's gotten into a great position there, put the ball across for a late run for a midfielder and uh, the midfielders were 20 yards away. Well, they must know that it's not too long to go before half time. They certainly took their time, the Pride taking that free kick into the 45th minute now. Lots can happen just before half time. It's been so far a fitting reenactment. Not that you can compare anything back from 1921 to 2021. No. No. Any similarities the game of football, the score's a little bit different. Um, I could pr yeah, probably say that to physically very similar in terms of the spirit that's being shown by both sides, um, as would have been way back then. Extra minute being held up as they will play. And having to work really hard, come back and just see it over the sideline. Michaela Hunt reading the game, coming back, helping out. Yep, just a little question mark for not how much time to go was the question I heard. Yeah, but I'll be wanting to get in and get a drink. Kelly Ward winning the battle there against Anneli Longo. And putting the ball into space and asking the players to run into it. Donald has it now. Little space. And that right boot up that right flank. Oh, good hassle from Dominikovic. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, you just want your front line just to harry the back line. And there's half time. Now it is half time. 46 minutes and 10 seconds. The players will be grateful. They've got enough energy to run to the respective dressing rooms, but in 100 years on, from the very first women's football match, it is Capital Football. They scored first through a penalty, Kayleigh Ward, and that was matched by 124 international cap, Annalie Longo, for the pride, with a wonderful piece of skill. It is one all at halftime here at English Park.
players out on the English Park pitch into the heat of the battle for the second half in the South Central Series and a reenactment of the first ever women's football match in New Zealand, 1921, September 24th. But here we are, December the 4th, 2021. And it's one all between these two sides. And you'd have to say, Mike Bono, in the heat of that first 46 minutes that we saw that Capital put their mark on the match. Pride did well to come back and match them in the goal stakes, but who would have been the happier coach? Yeah, I think uh, Maya Vink would have been the happiest walking in. Um, she would have set a, a certain game plan out to, to be a making it hard for them to be broken down. So defensively, I think they did that. We spoke at halftime about how compact the capital side looked from side to side, front to back, which makes it really hard for the creative players such as Kate Loy and Natalie Longo to get on the ball and get into any space. And we saw that through the pressure that uh, the capital side put on them and that pressure led to the first goal uh, from Kaylee Ward. So yeah, I would have, I would say that uh, Maya Vink would have walked in um, and, and both coaches now initially first of all I, I suppose hydrating would have been the first message to all of the players and now the uh, Annalie, Lo not Annalie Longo but Alana Gunn would have been uh, pressing on the girls. Uh, it's 1-1, one, one. Uh, there's 45 minutes left 45 minutes left in the season if it stays the same way it is um, so they're aware of, of the task at hand and uh, they will be uh, well, well primed to try and uh, assert the Canterbury United Pride uh, uh, pressure that we've seen of old Canterbury, Canterbury United Pride there on screen at the moment Annalie Longo in the background will have a major influence in the second 45 and Capital. Gosh, we've seen some great one-on-ones, and I'm thinking particularly Kaylee Wald and Rebecca Lake, the two very experienced players, one on either side, but every time there's a, a contest between those two, it's a fascinating to see who comes out with it. We, we've seen some great work from Olivia Ingham for Capital Football, and both teams given the whistle, although, let's face it, Capital are ready to play, and the Canterbury side still in their huddle. Yeah, last, I, my I'd, last minute chat. I'd agree with you, and uh, that that battle um, from uh, Kaylee Ward and uh, Rebecca Lade is, is uh, a great one. And uh, you saw the the, the goal which uh, Kaylee Ward pressured in that setting to uh, create the mistake to, to give the penalty. But also, what I've really uh, enjoyed is the midfield battle, which I think the Capital team have slightly uh, uh, light, slightly won. The uh, Helena Errington, I think, has been fantastic in the capital midfield. Certainly has. And they have hassled and they have destroyed any kind of midfield structure that the Pride have tried to get into the game. We're thinking about opportunities. Here's one early on. Green involved out on the left flank is almost a mirror image of what happened in the first opening minutes. Yeah, great, great one there by Anna Green and, and, and Tim Jones straight away uh, down this left hand side this is where they're looking to well the Can uh, capital football are looking to uh, promote the ball and Anna Green will be a little bit unhappy with uh, the final execution of the ball and it probably indicates that this capital side want to put as much pressure on as they can to maybe force the second goal really early on um, which then really uh, elevates the amount of pressure put on Canterbury United Pride well, they'll enjoy getting a free kick out of defence, all the pride for... Uh, this is the pressure that we're talking about, this time exerted by Pepe Oliver-Bell for Capital, putting pressure on the deep defence and not allowing the pride to really get the ball away. And they have got in front, and this is a great opportunity. Ward still has the ball. They're looking to try and fire that bullet-like shot at goal. Can't quite do it, but it's almost a bit lackadaisical from the pride and deep defence. Or yeah. there's not enough speed on that ball when it's being passed between the deep defenders. Absolutely, and at speed and accuracy. So you see there the, the, the ball across out from Unifoil out to Michaela Hunt and then just a, a wayward pass. But again, it's that pressure that's that, uh, I suppose, we talk about being more proactive and you saw the wide player there looking to nick the ball, bad pass, looking to nick the ball and try and uh, get something out of it. And 
just unfortunate for uh, Capital Football. I think they just looked for the perfect finish there where maybe Kayleigh Ward should have just got it out of your, got it out of her foot and, and, and just had a shot. Well, they did well getting it across to the right-hand side, Pride, and now through Longo, who tries for the straight ball through, but it's been interrupted. Rosie Wilde, the perpetrator there, and again, the fast pace of Kayleigh Ward has the ball. What can she do? She can have a shot at goal, and I think Ooh, that's that hit. It's a corner anyway. Foyle took evasive action, but it was stopped in front of her. But uh, again, that was a, a ball through from uh, number 20, Rosie Wild, who's been fantastic, and Kayleigh Ward, ever present up front, just chopping onto her left foot. And having a hit there, it uh, looks like it's hit uh, Michaela Hunt in the in the head. So hopefully she's all right. But again, the pressure asserted very early on. Maya Vinks probably said, let's get out there for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, press as hard as we can. Can we get another goal? And then they can sit back into that defensive block that they're, they're putting in, in place. So uh, corner here for, for Capital and yeah, Green. Let's see what they can do. And I tell you what, the wind's dropped completely. It is very, very hot out on this English Park pitch. And when a chance and it's run clear again, it's just not so as accurate as the Pride would like. But however, they do come away with the ball. But again, you cannot take your concentration levels away for any time because the capital players are in there and reading what the pressurized defenders are up to and the only options they have sometimes and they're able to read that and stop the shot now the ball into the box and well kept out by rebecca lake the captain for the pride again it's that that pressure one-on-one -on -one individual pressure looking to oh, that's neat work isn't it but being pinned back on that left side defense have come out well have the pride. Loy has it quite quiet in that first half, gets the ball forward, but again wasn't into space and straight back into the defenders for Capital. Anna Green sends the ball forward. And Ward again has it, sets herself, opts to go right. A couple of defenders back, chance here, and it's in! It's in! Well, that's Kaylee Ward. She's been magnificent this, the, today, um, and that's a just reward for that uh, for the work that she's done. A lot of pressure. That's great ball again from uh, from the back. So, and she's taken that well under pressure. So some pressure, long ball, and pressure from uh, Rebecca Lake. She's chopped on her right and then come back onto her left, and then she's put it into the top left hand corner, and that's a great left foot finish, Kaylee Ward. I mean, that's such an acute angle. And not only did she get round Rebecca Lake, she got round Michaela Hunt, who was coming back to help as well. So degree of difficulty, immense, yep. and delivered it and got the goal. And it, it epitomises how she's come out and played this game today for Capital. Absolutely. And, and Maya Vink will be sitting there very happy. Now she'll be just saying to the players, just have a little bit of a rest. Um, ensure that defensively we're, we're sound, but make the pressure come from, uh, well, put the pressure on Canterbury United. Across the ball from Dominikovic. Longo has it, can't, doesn't fall for her. And they're able to get the ball out again, able to send it to one of their own capital. A hallmark has been their accuracy. So not only clearing it out of deep defence to the correct areas, they've now put three passes together in the midfield. And this is Olivia Ingham who has it. She wins a corner. But again, that just, just highlights, I suppose, the composure, and that's being instilled from a Maya Vink coach side, the composure to defend well. The ball drops down, not just to hoof it up the field, but put it into an area where players might be, and then three passes up, and they've got a corner. It's no accident that Kayleigh Ward has scored the second capital goal. It was a terrific finish. You wouldn't get better in terms of degree of difficulty. They've worked so hard in the heat. They've won the one-on-ones and been so tidy. And they'll be happy with that. They'll just take their time, throw the ball down, 
walk to the ball. So this is where the experience will now come out because the pressure now is heavily on the Canterbury United Pride side. 2-1 down. They need to win this game. So they've got to find two goals from somewhere. And at this point in time, I'm not sure where they're going to come from. Annalie Longo, the ball's not popping up. It could have sat up for her there and then that was 2-2. Two -two. But they're just not making the chances compared to a capital side, which is very proactive very attacking the chances are coming from them so the next goal i can even see coming from them well even that little part of the match shows exactly how the capital side are working together as a team yeah and you just see the little little uh, things are going their way now so it was a great little uh, passage of uh, um, play there ball in tight but they were under advantage great advantage there from the referee who then saw no advantage, they come back, and Anna Green will be putting this into an area where in behind the back line of, of the Canterbury United Pride for one of her players to come on to. Oh, she's going to deliver it across the face of the goal. There's no doubt about that. There it goes. It's a good one too, and it's not about. I almost felt that you were nodding with it, Mike, to both <laughs> Well, as a coach, you do the same thing when balls are in. Oh, and that's a, that's a tough challenge. But again, that's epitomised exactly yeah. what Capital have been about today. Well, it's interesting. There was a card given for one early yep. in the game, yep. and there wasn't one there. Yeah, so I suppose state of the game, maybe uh, just a little bit of, uh, I don't know, just an indecision there. But yeah, absolutely right. So no different. But uh, Anna Green will be a little bit disappointed that nobody's got on the the end to force something with a great free kick there. Really, really. Again, the energy of uh, Pepe. The straight ball through from Hepburn. Does it hold up in the wind? And Simons again in goal just remonstrating with her defenders. Come on, give me some help. You left me out here on my own. She did well. 2-1, capital lead. Bit of brilliance, and Kaylee Ward continues her goal scoring prowess. And Simons has plenty of time to see this. Yeah, ball in there uh, from this right hand side from Jazz Donald looking for Domi Dominikovic, who just couldn't get a, a touch on the ball. And again, good defending. And you can really hear the, the coaching staff from a, a pride side to just try and get some pressure, put some pressure on this back line, but uh, just not responding in capital side, which are really comfortable at the moment. Demanding from each other. I yeah, mean, that's absolutely. The, that's what you can see, the gesturing out there. Um, they're not happy with each other, but they're not taking umbrage to that, and they're responding and, and putting their, their very best football skills. Yeah. Hepburn intercepts, has a long range shot, but it is well astray, speculative, but why not? Yeah, and that's a Whitney Hepburn special from those sorts of distances, and nine times out of ten she'll get them on target. But yeah, you, you've got two sides um, very contrasting in what's happening. I think you're seeing a pride side you who players just don't look like they want to get on the ball, whereas capital side... So substitution, Pepe Oliver Bell has come off and she's been replaced by Samantha White. One of the players brought in late into the squad after that horrific collision between a couple of the capital players that resulted in a, unfortunately, broken noses. A couple of them. Hepburn can't get the pass away after intercepting. And they want White to feel the pace of the game early on. Oh, yeah, Pippi Oliver Bell's had a good game too. But Maya Vink and in consultation with Micah Reuter Hooley and Paul Eiffel have decided that they are making these substitutions. They want relentless running up the front. Well, they'll just be looking at the state of the play as well, especially the heat and players uh, keeping up with the, the speed of the game, the intensity of the game. So Morrow and Guilford and it was well. That's great defending. Yeah, it is really clever. And it looks like they'll be asking for another substitution. What's happening here? It looks like you've got uh, Freya Nim Lodge coming on and Kiara Bacelli. Right play on, says Anna Marie Keeley. 
and Loy having to go back and mop up for the pride. Longo out on the left this time here. This. Look at a little bit of individual brilliance. She's already shown that. Guilford puts it across, but it's knotted away competently out of the capital defence. And again, it's that just that final ball. Um, Kate Guilford with no pressure there has just put that right across. So. So disappointed with that. Nikola Dominikovic is coming off. And as we mentioned earlier in the match, probably a miracle that she even started with the hip injury that she's got. And also Jasmine Donald being replaced by Freya Lodge Whittam. And number seven, Chiara Bocelli, has already scored for the Pride in the South Central Series. And she'll provide some real energy up front there and uh, really try to harass the uh, two centre backs of Capital who have done very, very well today. It gets nearly touched as Bocelli. And that very tall frame of Anna Green, very safe and sure in defence for Capital. Yeah, and she's. Uh, She's been uh, very good today, both defensively and attacking-wise, leading by example in both moments, um, talking, you, you may not see it a lot, but she's talking to her team in terms of how to manage the game. We talk about manage the game, and they're 2-1 up, so they'll just be slowing things down, um, trying to put a bit more pressure on Canterbury United, frustrating them because they want the game to get going. Um, and Greeny will be just saying, slow down, take your time. We're in no hurry. Um, so she's been uh, very good uh, in 59th minute we're into and the ball is with the pride and all the work ahead for the pride and does she get an early touch outside. Outside. Yeah. So, so i wouldn't have counted no again that's a it's strong defending um, under attack there a, a ball through to chiara pichelli from Anneli longo no it wasn't it was from a, a wide pass and uh, that was kate guilford putting the ball through but uh, unfortunately, off now we've got uh, Kaylee Ward. This is another good contest here. The uh, player replacement player White has the ball for Capital, and lurking at the top is the goal scorer. And oh, it wasn't far away. That was a really good opportunity using the wind, hoping the wind would drag it back towards the left-hand post. Yeah, great, great uh, moment there. A ball out uh, out to this wide side, both uh, um, White and. Ward looking to uh, get on there and uh, White taking the shot and looking to drift it in on that uh, far post. And if that had gone in, it surely would have been probably the end of uh, Canterbury United Pride's hopes of uh, uh, winning this competition. It wasn't far away, that's for sure. Screaming for it out on the right is Frankie Morrow. Now bringing it through. Replacement player and lodge with him, but it's with Morrow out on the right. And well blocked off by Green. She won't give up the contest with Loy. No room to move forward. Looking one way, passing the other. Putting it directly flat across, looking for the one-two. Again, Pacelli has the ball. What can she do with it across? Good save, Simons, in goal for Capital. Wonderful. So great, great little passage there. A, a ball into Kate Guilford, who's a one-touch ball off to uh, Chiara Bocelli, as you see coming in through here. A ball in from Frankie Morrow, a little one-touch ball off to Chiara Bocelli, who uh, is down on goal, but uh, the keeper from uh, Capital, Molly Sim Simons, is uh, is up to it. With danger from Longo. Here's Morrow out on the right again, floating into the goal. She looks great, doesn't he? Good athlete. Molly Simons in goal for Capital. You know, I think they've uh, maybe asked... Uh, um, to come and promote the ball a little bit uh, more down this right-hand side. The last two chances they've had uh, have come from this side, so maybe they've seen something from Canterbury United Pride side. And uh, some Frankie Morrow uh, putting in a couple of crosses there. And this is where the substitutes come from. Uh, this right-hand side, they'll be asking... Uh, Freya Lodge with him to try and connect going forward to emulate what's happening on the left hand side here for Capital with uh, Anna Green getting forward. Anna Green with the throw and it was interesting looking at her, she went to pick up the ball, she just looked so relaxed, smiled, gave a lovely thank you to the ball girl. Her demeanour 
is appreciated. And this very good ball through, just a little bit too much on it. And Foyle, Una Foyle able to come out, redirect the ball. Byrne has it, clever, she's used that well. But in order to stretch this capital side, does the ball speed have to be a little greater? Well, it has to be faster, but players uh, need to get into positions to get on the ball. The capital side of, as I said, defensive been been very good. So you can see here from side to side, very compact. So it's hard to play through. So you've got to go around. Um, ball pushed through into space and Simons again comes out and ops for safety, goes down low. Read it well, but starting to create the pride starting to create but they're, they're not really major chances and your keeper again you've got to be pretty happy she's come off her line she's cleaned up um, and she's put capital football on the front foot uh, going forward with a ball in behind uh, but she's been she's been very very good uh, at the back uh, for capital in terms of uh, molly simons there so defensively when the ball's going through, if your keeper's going to come out and get it, then... Uh, oh, crikey, gives, look hmm. at this. This is great pressure from White. Wonderful work from the capital striker on foil, but she got the ball out after the Pride were pinned down on their left-hand side. It's great pressure. Great pressure by this capital side. They, they've not relented that pressure right from the opening whistle, right from the beginning of the match. Definitely the beginning of the second half. Yeah, still 30 minutes to go, um, so anything can still happen, but uh, I think it's going to have to be something pretty special at this point in time to pr try and break this capital defensive unit. See, that was a, a really confident, yeah, confident pass exit. from Hepburn. It had to be controlled expertly in order to break down the structure that capital have put on Pride. But yeah, just a confident exit, and they're on the ball. They're happy to go back to the keeper. And they'll probably, yeah, and they'll come out this side more likely and happy to promote the ball under pressure. This time looking for a run down the Anna left Green. Anna Green again. Oh, she's got she's a ball in the middle. Just so important player. White has the ball, gets it perfectly and looks for that right-hand side of Una Foyles. And going Green. for the near post again, Mike. Yeah, and again, great run and a great ball from uh, um, the centre-back to put Anna Green in there and uh, a great ball across right in front of uh, White. And they'll be disappointed that uh, they've not put that one away. Bit more space to work from. The Pride out on their left, but still in their defensive half. Utilising the space well now with Lake. You see uh, Capital gone into a little bit of a, a formation change. Uh, look like they've gone into a five in the midfield. That's going to make it a lot harder. Happy to have one up front to, to promote. But She looks great on the run, doesn't she? Anna Lee Longo. Yeah. And now the flag goes up. They were screaming for it, Capital. Well, that again just shows the confidence. And now you've got to change. Number 21 for uh, Capital coming on. Lauren Owen coming on for... Jaden Watts. Jaden Watts, and she's just jogging off on the opposite side. She's been a solid in the back. She's done a really good job and come up and helped at uh, corner time as well. Mm. And you're just going to see White drop into uh, a defensive role because that is uh, predominantly where she plays. So she's been up front, uh, pushing Pepe back into uh, a midfield role. And looks like they've gone to two deep liars uh, capital it looks like a, what we call a little box box midfield so they're really going to make it hard for capital midfield uh, sorry canterbury united midfield to get on the ball which is uh, where the danger normally comes from this cap uh, from this uh, canterbury united side you know it's just been uh, what they've been able to create for themselves capital is that they that half pace ahead all match and the accuracy the finish as Ingham will not get to that, but it, through defence, through midfield, they have been so accurate and they know where each other are. Yeah, and you, you, similar sort of uh, um, option they're looking for there, just a little drop off and try to promote down this left hand side, but you've seen now Anna Green into a, a centre back role and she's really going to make it hard for this uh, Cary Knight side being there. Out on the left for the Pride. 
and great great defending on that uh, right hand side by Gemma Robertson. Free kick for Capital. They just the pride had not been able to get position long enough really to mount relentless attacks. Yeah, it doesn't feel like uh, they're playing at home. Um, Capital have come down here with a with a fantastic game plan, just to really make it hard for Canberra United Pride to, to to make any opportunities, make it hard for their playmakers. Annalie Longo, uh, you know, Kate Loy to get on the ball, who predominantly create um, everything for them, and have just pressed wherever the ball is in ones and twos. The second phase ball they've been on top of and then once they've got on it as you see here they're just composed to keep the ball yep well that's a perfect example that was yep. canterbury pride ball and out that needed to be absolutely brought down and that's probably the first wayward pass we've probably seen from from their back line but, but now just composed and that's the experience of uh, of anna green just to put the ball on a plate for for one of the strikers Oh, wonderful body balance there, Rosie Wild. Gosh, she's played well today. She might be hurting a bit, but she did so well to keep her balance. Got a bit of a check and was able to, more importantly, keep the ball for her side. And that was a great advantage by Anne-Marie, uh, the referee today. Um, seeing nothing come of it, a lot, lot of referees just would have pulled that up and play would have stopped. But uh, Capital Football given the advantage and promoted uh, the ball to a high position. Again, looking to turn it over. You do get the impression if Annalie Longo's involved that something happens, her, her speed and the crowd get excited. She's got the ball now, but it's almost as if she has to do it all herself. Yeah, everything's too slow around her. Yeah. You know, and then she has to do too much. She has to do too much there. So she's overrun the ball there or just her first touch on the ball there, that which would normally be better. Maybe she's tired because she's having to do so much. Um, but yeah, and again, look at that. So, and I think she <laughs> the quality of an international player there to milk that. I think, uh, I think the ball had already gone, and then uh, well, Annalie, she might have got a check, but she might have made, made it. Might have just made it, made it a, look little a little bit more dramatic. Yep, um, it was impressive. But hey, uh, something might come of this. So uh, something like that is always uh, appreciated when uh, a goal comes from it. Pride have the ball out on their left hand side, mm, probably about five meters in front of the box, but on an angle. I nice. see Bocelli have a shot here using the wind. Uh, let's see what she can do. And referee Keeley just demanding from the wall, who creep up just a little bit. No, go back now. Now, can Chiara Bocelli? do with this free kick across the face it goes and no one makes connection it's just a bit too much on the ball there good defending though numbers uh, for capital uh, but just a little bit too uh, too far so no hurry for capital to take this they are two one ahead and they're having a drinks break. Yeah, that's fair. You did call uh, yeah, this, absolutely. didn't you? You predicted yeah. that in the heat that we've said that it's at least the, well, the high for today in Christchurch was meant to be 27. So the local time, half past three. So it's probably that. But as mentioned earlier, at least another 10 degrees on turf. Well, it's uh, probably 10 degrees that sitting up here um, when that wind doesn't come up. And if it's uh, 25 degrees out, um, then, yeah, it's going to be a good 25 uh, or 30, 30, probably even a close to 40 once you put the energy and uh, body temperatures on top of that. As I say, the feet will be swelling, so the, the, the players, and to be playing how they're playing, is fantastic under these conditions. Um, it's, a, it's a credit to, to both teams, you know. Yeah, and playing as hard as they are. Well, the fresh legs of Lauren Owen was out there first for Capital. She's really just come onto the field, but a welfare, play a welfare break right now with probably just a tad over 20 minutes left in this match. It was such a big match in the context of the South Central Series. The pressure on the Canterbury Pride for the win to make, put them in contention for the title for Capital. They just need to keep winning.
They went down south last week and won away, and they're proving that they can not only win at home, they can win away. Well, that yeah. would be fair to say that I think Southern did take the points when they went up to Wellington. Yeah, and then uh, it was reversed when uh, Capital yeah. went down to Southern. But yeah, um, real immense pressure now on this Canterbury United Pride uh, team to to, yeah, to get two goals. But where are they going to come from? Um, I can't see them coming from uh, too many areas at the moment probably when uh, you see it when Annalie Longo gets on the ball something looks like something's going to happen but there just doesn't seem to be any urgency when other players or players are on the ball to get on the ball um, so I'm just not sure where it's going to come from in contrast when a capital player is on the ball every player looks like they want to get on the ball a bit of pressure going on the capital defence then but they cope with that mopped it up sent the ball forward Owen. Bit of pressure, a bit more pressure. Can't keep the ball. Oh, that's a great exit. Under pressure. Well, the two substitutes really doing some great work for Capital. Oh, an opportunity here for Ingham. And Just offside. Late call again, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, they, I think they play uh, as soon as the player touches it. But uh, again, great intent, great exit under pressure on that right-hand side to come out this way. And the substitute, number 21, uh, Lauren Owen, finding a great ball out here to, again, the substitute, who uh, then puts number seven through, um, Olivia Ingham. Lloyd, <sighs> trying your own little bit of magic. Nice one, too. We haven't seen too many of them that distribution not where they want it and all the experience of Anna Green wearing free for capital she has been fantastic oh, free kick for the pride it's interesting when those big strong whistles go and the players look around who me taken quickly not mucking around and Michelli oh. oh she had a great opportunity can she keep it in no okay wow so that was great that was fantastic uh, a sight from uh, Frankie Frankie Morrow there sees the early run in by Bacelli it was a great ball and a great run in behind and just just the slightest of touches would have been what she wanted I think it's just got too much on it Bacelli but a great little mo moment then time to run beautifully didn't she it's all experience with these young players yeah, absolutely and they've shut down this part of the game that the pride have tried to put in play you see even that long ball through now longo looks so good when she runs with the ball doesn't she has great control of four potentially again lots of yellow shirts back plus the goalkeeper. Molly Simons again, as I said, to have a keeper who's going to come out and be confident and take the ball under pressure uh, as, a, as a back four. That's uh, so calming and so reassuring. And yeah, they, as a back four plus the keeper, they've done very, very well. Um, even with the substitutes that have been made, they've slotted in so well. That's a great ball over the top by Green. They've done that a few times, haven't they? And yeah. it's really got them some reward. And this is Kaylee Ward getting Foyle's legs. What a great save. There's still no danger. And the ball is there. And booted out now nearly to halfway. What a terrific save. Una Foyle, take a bow. One-on-one, -on -one, Kaylee Ward, ball through. One on one, and Una Foyle saves with the feet. That's that's the second one on one save she's made. So hats off to Una Foyle. She's doing everything she can to uh, give the platform to Canterbury United Pride to get back into this game. But if that had gone in, that was a uh, game set match, I believe. Absolutely, well, it's the sort of thing that can really spark a team, can't it? Can yep. just draw the team. And even look at this fantastic work. Just never giving up. Hunting, hunting. Hepburn looks forward, finds Pacelli. Can't keep the ball though. Who does it come back to? Samantha White. And that very precise passing that we've seen from this capital side all match. And they win the throw. Again, calming influence, but again, happy to try and play out under pressure. And I think the difference today is both teams have been wanting to do that, but the precision which uh, capital have done it under has been far superior. And a little smile there from... Uh, Anne-Marie 
in terms of that physical battle there and the players campaigning. And uh, Anne Marie's just saying, look, just get on with it. It was a fair contest, wasn't it? I mean, Absolutely. they were just outnumbered around the ball. Yep. But... And Kayleigh Ward has been strong today and uh, yeah, they've had a, uh, a shout for a free kick there. But hey, look, uh, the referee's done very well today to, to uh, let things play on. And this will be waiting for, uh, for Arne again with Whitney Hepburn. Well, 2 1, Capital lead deservedly so. Let's take you through those goals after 20 into the 20. Second minute, it was a Kelly Ward penalty, and after she was brought down, and then Annalie Longo possibly you know, there was a sustained build up from the pride of a five minute build up, and Annalie Longo decided she had to do it after that wonderful pass through from Michaela Hunt. And then Kelly Ward in the 50th minute put a field goal away to stamp and exhibit again just the dominance that slight more than slight dominance as this capital side has had over the pride yeah i think you're quite right in saying that and and that period where annalee longo scored has been the only opportunity that uh, or the only moment that canterbury united pride have i suppose had any dominance within the game otherwise it's been capital football from uh, the start other than that time up until now um and they're you know they're uh, in terms of the score, they're good quality for that score. Yeah, well, tactically, they have carried out the game plan beautifully, Capital. They've demanded from each other, they've delivered from each other, and it's going to have to be something extra special from the Pride if they're going to get up, either match the score and even better take gain. But, as mentioned, so much can happen. I mean, how many goals are scored in the 90th minute? Plenty. Heaps, heaps, as we always say as coaches. You know, the last, uh, before half time and uh, just after half time and, and before the full time whistle are very important times because, uh, yeah, that's when a lot of uh, goals are conceded and scored. But again, um, capital football there, very sound in defence, very compact. And Maya Vink's done a fantastic job uh, with this team in terms of uh, getting them set up and getting them ready. Um, for this competition, or, or especially this game, knowing it's a, it's a win at all cost game and puts, uh, I would say, her team in the box seat for, for this competition. Absolutely right. And again, just reiterating just how cool it is that the South Central Series exists. And I know sad that the teams in the top of the North Island can't be part of it, but at least there's something for these players. Absolutely, yeah. And they can also still enjoy the, the Ferns on the world stage doing fantastically and also the, uh, the Phoenix uh, girls doing a great job in their first match. Right, another opportunity here for the Pride. We've seen a couple in this half. As everybody is back for this capital side and just minus two from the Pride. So there's a lot of congestion in that box. Who's going to get the touch? And in the end, easily for Simons to leap high and take it uncontested. Oh, Morrow does well, but equally beautifully. Samantha White, and she gets all the plaudits from the coaching box because it's gone on to Olivia Gibbs, but that is called offside. You can see the uh, the energy being exerted from the sideline from Paul Eiffel, uh, keeping the team going. They know they're not far off uh, getting a good result here. And uh, also still asking them to force something on that attacking moment when they're on the ball, asking for players to break beyond the back line. So a lot of energy coming from, the, from their sideline. Getting lots of cues to send the ball forward to Pride, but opting for the longer ball. And he bumped off Lodge with him. After pushing up, they're going to have to get back. Hepburn's back. And Ingham, who's been good for Capital. But those two players, Anna Green, Kayleigh Ward, have been the architects. Yeah, absolutely. Anna Green from a, a defensive moment perspective, but also attacking moment from uh, um, when she was playing left back. And Kayleigh Ward, energy personified today. Um, she's had a fantastic game for me, uh, a capital football player of the match. Absolutely agree. Very similar looking players too when they're out on the pitch. 
and great to have someone like Paul Eiffel on the sideline to, cool. to give his, uh, his thoughts and support to uh, these girls. Coming down to Christchurch United next yeah. year. A good get for them. Very good get. Whether he'll play too, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Still it's all about development, isn't it? But uh, winning's important. Great, lovely skill from Mortlock. But loses the ball, pushes it again back, so they have to retrieve the pride, get it back up the field. They have enjoyed more possession, and it has been better territory for them, but they haven't been able to really break into that box except for those free kicks. Yeah, it's just been bit, bit chances. They haven't created a lot of things compared to the capital side who have harassed and then got on to sort of second phase ball, as you just see there. Um, and then there's a decision for, for the referee. Mm. And, but yeah, they've, they've made the opportunities. Uh, they've made the penalty through pressure. But doesn't that just show, you know, that the contest even to get that free throw, who was going to get the sideline throw? Yeah. They were demanding it. Great exit from Michaela Hunt, worked hard for the pride. And that handy boot forward again. Foul on Loy. Taken quickly by Lake. No, they want it. All the players down on the deck. Interesting, really, isn't it? When a player's down and everything's going against you, you want the ball to be played. But if you're two one up, you want to slow it down. So um, good refereeing there. Uh, head injury, so you have to stop the ball. You have to stop the play there just uh, for the welfare of the players. Lakes kick into the box. Hello. Again, look at that wonderful control, headed down, taking the ball forward, and then pushing the ball forward for Kaylee Ward, who now will be called for offside. But again, it just that not it's not speculative, it's not by accident, it's by design. Well, again, as I say, you can hear from the sideline they're asking players to break beyond once they get into a, a front foot position. So. It is by design, not just by uh, accident that they're uh, making these opportunities. So, again, the pressure on getting that ball in, and it's paid dividends for Capital. She is in Kaylee Ward is yeah, fantastic everything. today. But everything. she'll just hold it up here. She knows where they're at and what they're doing. But then you've got the fullback bombing on. Well, she's talking to the bench the whole time as well, Kaylee Ward, and, and getting the intel back. Not that she needs it because she's read the game beautifully today. Longo, the first couple of steps are always quick. She's so fast. Now, across it goes, left boot, and towards the goal. Oh, and is it a no goal? It's in. Two all. Wow, look at that. Delivered by Frankie Morrow. And own uh, deflection. So, so did uh, she get the in. goal? Yeah, and Lee Longo pops the ball in. So it was a, a, a cross or a shot by uh, Frankie Morrow. Well, it's deflected off uh, capital player, which is Bulls risen, and then it's dropped to Annalie Longo, who's just uh, placed it in. Wow, look at that. Kennedy Bryant, I think, put her hands on her head as soon as she saw it go back. And who was there? Ever present. We talked about it. Yeah, the little Annalie energizer. Longo. Two. So is this the spark that the Canterbury United Pride side need to uh, get them back in the game? Or get them the goal they need to uh, keep them in this competition? Wow, look at that. Stalling the virtues of this capital side, and within the blink of an eye, it can all be undone. Now the ball goes forward to Pichelli. And demanding the handball. Play on. We haven't seen much whistle in this game. It's been really well controlled. Wall comes up and tries to exert her dominance. Pichelli can't keep it. His fresh legs have benefited capital. But you can just see a little bit of impetus coming from this uh, Canary United Pride side. They can sniff another goal in here. Ali Longo looking to get on the ball. Look, they're looking to promote wide, get Frankie Morrow on the ball. He's been very good today. Now the ball straight into the gap. She has an opportunity to lodge with him. Can she get the shot away? And it's a, a oh, good a great save. save. Wonderful. Molly Simons. But that was a great ball through by Whitney Hepburn, which put uh, Freya with him through. And the pressure really now coming from this Canterbury United Pride. So a ball through by Whitney Hepburn. 
and some gr a great challenge through here who puts uh, with him on the front foot and a great save. Oh, interesting, the players going for the new post yeah. all the time, aren't they? Now the ball goes across, and who's connecting? So it will come back and... And I think it's a high boot. Yep. It's interesting, Maya Vink, coach, head coach of Capital, was down on the sideline, on her haunches. She'll be just wanting things to slow down for the so Capital side to get a little bit... To get that pressure back on the ball, because it's uh, just slowly coming off this Canterbury United pride side. And the draw... Oh, and that's, that's well done by Kennedy Bryant. Yeah, she's had such a good game. Yes, yeah, she has. Not so much the last couple of minutes, but she's proven that back to foil and Kaylee Ward will put a lot of pressure on this exit ball. And they'll just take their time. We are into the 88th minute. It is two all. But the energy's come from both sides because they both know that uh, a draw isn't good enough for either of them. So Capital them. still want the win because they know that uh, they've got the, I suppose, the... Well, when the ball's with Kaylee Ward, as it is at the moment, and, oh, what a lovely, lovely tackle. That is fantastic work from Freya Lodge with, with him. Yeah. That is fantastic. Clean as a whistle. Dangerous area. Really dangerous. So what do you do here? Do you promote numbers forward uh, to get that goal that you want? Oh, and Kaylee Ward, that's awesome. Gee, the ball There's holding so up. Much Look pressure. at the, That wind is just playing havoc, isn't it? Yeah, and that pressure by Kaylee Ward. The ball was going out. Um, everybody felt, but she kept pressing and pressing and pressing. A little right football across, which has given uh, Capital Football. Gee, this is going to be a tough corner, though, because it's into the wind. And the wind suddenly, after sitting still for the beginning of the second half, it's really pumped itself up. Now you can see Annie Longo just uh, promoting herself a little bit higher. So if they win the ball, they're going to look to go early. Oh, it's a great corner kick. Really good. And a strike coming here now. And Foyle will have a look up and see that Annie Longo is out to the left, but she opts to go down, out to the right for Chelly. And didn't know where it was. Both players cleverly got out by Rosie Wilde. Rosie been Wilde has been so yeah, solid today. Yeah, really, Composed. really good. She's let nothing get behind her. Kennedy Bryant looking to turn the back line. She's owned whose position, there's yes, no doubt. Has. Oh, look at that piece of magic. Oh, that is just superb work, isn't it? Olivia Ingham delivers the ball and the shot and Foyle again makes a point-blank save. That is brilliant. Talk about the end-to-end. And Una Foyle made some uh, fantastic saves today. Longo's up there, putting pressure on Wild, and it'll be a throw in from the, the sideline. So replay. And uh, Una Foyle takes a, a save, which keeps uh, the Pride back in this, and the pressure really heaped on now by the Pride. Oh, certainly the Pride need to really push up in numbers if they want to take this match. I think they're just going to want to get it in the box here. The ball goes across Longo. The Here instigator, Hickburn, looking for a bit of match, and she'll oh. get the free kick as well, just outside the front of the box. Looking so I think you're going to see uh, someone who takes some out of this will be uh, a number 10, Annalie Longo, I think. She'll push everyone away and looking to uh, get herself a hat-trick today. Four so four minutes. minutes. Four extra minutes, folks. Two all at the moment. So a little collision there by uh, in Kennedy Bryant and uh, Whitney Hepburn. But, uh, yeah, Annalie Longo's, uh, she's not going to shy away from this. She'll take uh, the ownership and leadership, and uh, if she puts this in, well... Hat-trick, if hat -trick, she does. Hat-trick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hat when you ask your, your key players to uh, put your hand up, uh, I know for a fact she's one that always uh, will put her hand up as much as she can, so... Wind has certainly got up from the northwest. it's turned around. Swirling at English Park, reenactment of 100 years of women's football. Does it come down to this for Annalie Longo, searching for a win? And the ball has done its job for Capital. And free kick again. My oh, Vink's not happy on the side, not happy at all. And remonstrating with the officials. 
Yeah, I don't think the capital players will be happy with that. I'm not sure if I saw too much in that either. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you heard Maya Vink from the sideline, uh, not happy also. But it gives uh, Chiara Bacelli to uh, the opportunity to put their Canterbury United side pride ahead with this free kick. A rule of yellow jerseys, she sees. A sprinkling of the red ones interspersed with the remainder of the capital. And here is Vicelli, chips it over the top. Oh, 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 my goodness me, she has put it in against the run of play. They cannot believe it. A free kick outside the box. And look at that. Chiara Pacelli. And she just lines us up. It's a great little free kick. Just places it in that top left-hand corner. Keep it, tries as much as she can, but she just gets it, sneaks it in that, uh, that post. So what a frantic end now. So we've got uh, another two minutes, or just under two minutes. But I think uh, the Capital players will, and Maya Vink won't be too happy with uh, maybe that free kick being given away or awarded. But uh, what a great finish. What a great finish. Never say never, folks. No. And yeah. that's uh, Canterbury United pride to a T. Yep, and we've been talking so much about what Capital have brought to this game. They have dictated the game. And for the... There's my notes must be flying in that gust of wind. Sorry for the person who has to chase them all. But then again, it comes down to maybe those two saves that, uh, you know, Una, Una Foyle has made, those one-on-one yep. -on -one saves. So the importance of those to this game. And so you see a change here, 9 for 19. So Alana Firth coming on. She'll be asked to tighten things up for this last two minutes. Well... And Frankie Morrow she's had a great coming game. off. Yes, she Frankie has. Frankie Morrow. What a goal, though, from Chiara Bacelli to well, it pinch the match for the Pride, is the best way that I can describe it. But so much kudos to the Pride for hanging in there. Yep. And they seemingly didn't have the position stakes, they didn't have the territory stakes. They weren't accurate as Capital were, but when it comes to getting them in the back of the net, taking your opportunities, it's called. Absolutely. And it also comes down to key players making those moments and both of those free kicks were, were from uh, Annalie Longo who's for, forced a lot of pressure up high and uh, asked the question of the referee and put pressure on the referee as well so uh, hats off to her well, into the last dime seconds of the match and offside called against Capital and we can't have too many seconds left There's in the 55 match. 55 seconds, I think. Uh, what a game. We're just about it. So you're in the referee's hands now, Anne-Marie. Yep. She's looking over at her assistants to compare notes as referee Anna see, Maria. You can see Evie. the opposite with uh, Pride just slowing it all down. Good kick out of defence. Yeah. Well, they've come, they've come from behind the whole way, haven't they, the Pride? And conceding that penalty in the 22nd minute, which Kayleigh Ward put away so expertly, coming from behind. The referee has a quick look at her watch. He's going to add a couple of seconds on. It's out on the side. And is she having another look? Referee Kelly, what a match. What a <laughs> fitting match, 100 years of women's football. Years. It's so fitting that it comes down. We talked about the 90th minute, didn't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. How many goals? There and it that's is. it, Canterbury oh United Pride. Goodness. Wow, the Canterbury Pride, after being behind, they are, well, they haven't got too much energy, to be fair, looking at them. And the capital side know that they did enough to win that, but it hasn't been the way that it's turned out. 3-2 no. to the Pride over Capital. They'll be, they'll be really disappointed, and uh, you've got to feel gutted for this, uh, Canterbury, uh, this uh, capital side who came here with a great game plan to try and stifle, to harass, uh, give no pressure, and they've done that for, what, 86 minutes they did it for. Um, and then in the 89th minute, a young Chiara Pacelli pops up uh, on a free kick, which is awarded from uh, an Anneli Wolongo pressure and she pops it in that uh, top right-hand corner of the keeper. And what a finish it was, really calculated, and you could see what she was trying to do. So hats off to her too, because a lot of pressure for a young girl to be able to do that. So congrats, and congratulations to Canterbury United Pride. That's why they are champions. Yeah, absolutely. And you look, saw after the match that Alana Gunn, the Pride coach, went straight up to Bacelli. One of her players that she has advanced, has uh, tutored her, has mentored her, and to see her finish off a game like this, how cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, what more can you say? Yeah. Uh, two teams 
befitting a final yep. of, of this competition if it was uh, two teams who have put it on the mark 100 years um, and lots of talent at, 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 in display and uh, both teams can walk off really proud with what they've done today. Absolutely. The win points go in this historic match here at English Park to Canterbury United. They have seen off the challenge of this very good capital side and have taken the match 3-2 here at English Park.